I messed up, guys. I messed up big time. So, in getting prepared to join the front and rear fuselages together, following the plans, uh, it appeared that this front archway stayed together because just the natural way that it all fit together and how you rivet the top um, cross member is in and everything. Um, there was a note about clecoing this top section and leaving it clecoed until the sides were on, but that was kind of a little unclear what that meant. Long story short, you cannot join the fuselage, which is sitting right here next to me. Let me move a couple things here. You cannot join the fuselage with these on there. Can't do it. And I had already put in 18 A5 rivets down the side on both sides. So, luckily I didn't do the whole thing. So now I have to drill out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 rivets on both sides. Take out the Clecos at the top, pull these side channels out. Luckily the rear channels are still Clecoed in. I was about to rivet those because that's how you get the mixing arm installed in the back. You have to rivet those front and back. So again, there's gaps in the instructions and only until I looked at the online photographs where they have a guy on the ground by himself and all of this framework is removed from the fuselage did I realize that there's no possible way to just slide these in here. These have to be basically slid in and then the channels wrapped around the angle here after you've inserted them. So, time to start drilling some rivets out. <sighs> Got an injury. This is only part one of removing the rivet. Luckily, I'm just basically twisting off the heads. I'm drilling in and twisting them off. When I take the channel off, I'll have to clean out all those holes and make sure they're clean on both sides. So it looks kind of easy right now. I'm only doing the half of it. There's the channel. You can see I still have all of the rivets to clean up and get out of these holes here, re-clean up the skins, but now I'll have plenty of room to get this side piece in there, but now we're back to the uh, wet noodle again. So, all right guys, we'll keep pressing on.
Hey guys, it's Adam here in the AeroWorks Workshop and this video started off kind of on the wrong foot. Uh, we had some difficulty getting going this week, made a couple mistakes. It happens when you're doing a kit aircraft like this. But when we look at the big picture, it has only been one month since we started the CH750 Super Duty here in the AeroWorks Workshop. So I want to give you a few updates. I want to answer a few questions that we got uh, from viewers. First big update is I got a call from Zenith uh, yesterday that the finishing kit will be shipping in the next week or two. So that's exciting. And you may say, well, why do you need a finish kit right now? You're not even halfway done. And that is, the, that is true. But things come in the finish kit that you need, like the landing gear, the tires, the brakes, uh, the brake cylinders that go in behind the rudder pedal. Some of these things probably should be in the initial kit, but they ship them that way because they keep all the brake components together, and I understand that. So we're going to do a full video on that, what comes in a Super Duty finish kit uh, coming up shortly. But just know that we're going to be seeing some big progress here in the next few weeks. I want to answer a few viewer questions. We had some questions uh, on the forums and on the videos themselves. Uh, a simple question, somebody asked, you know, how big of a workbench do you need or what kind of workbench are you using? I'm actually using what's called, uh, they're made by a company called Bora, and I'll put a link down in the description, but they're, they're called a Speed Horse, Bora Speed Horse, and they hold 1,800 pounds each. I have three of them, and I basically just took a 16-foot 2x4, made two rails, one on the left and right side, and actually repurposed some of the uh, plywood sheeting from the crate and made a surface. It's, it's very level. It's definitely sufficient for building the fuselage on. I did beef it up with some cross members, but very simple. And the fact that you can take it all apart by simply removing a couple screws, taking the 2x4s out, folding up the speed horses and you're back to a clean wide open shop. So definitely look at that as an option if you're limited on space or even if you have a lot of space but you just want to be able to you know pack it up when you're all done with that. So something to keep in mind there. I had a question about the rivet gun, the uh, Milwaukee rivet gun. Again we're not sponsored by Milwaukee by any means but uh, when I was looking into purchasing rivet guns uh, when I first started the build obviously the factory air recommended one I did purchase that and, and what I do is I set up two different guns one for the A4 rivets one for the A5 rivets that way I don't have to switch out the head one thing you're going to find out when you're using the Zen Air rivets um, they actually have a machined head on them and I'll see if I can show that to you right here if you look right in the middle right there instead of it just being a flat uh, pop rivet head like you might find at the hardware store Zenith has actually machined those out. So when you put your flat rivet in and you squeeze that rivet, it actually concaves, or I guess that's not concave, but it rounds the rivet and uh, makes a nice tight fit, plus give it some, gives, gives it an aerodynamic uh, look on the outside of the aircraft, which you know will improve speed overall. Uh, as far as the, uh, the unit itself, um, you know, it's a little spindy. I think they're, you know, if you buy just the tool by itself, it's a couple hundred dollars, two, 220, two, 229, 249, something like that. Um, if you buy it with batteries and charger, I already had another tool by Milwaukee um, and I had the 12 volt batteries already for another item. So I had two batteries and a charger. So I just bought the tool. But this thing runs all day long, multiple days without charging it. It has a little battery indicator on the side. Um, but you squeeze it and it pulls the rivet, cuts it off, and you're on to the next one. So I've been using that one for all of my uh a5 rivets and i use the a4 rivet i use that with the air gun because most of the a4 rivets on the fuselage uh, are on the rear of the fuselage and the a5 start to be around the uh, uh the cabin area the sides the landing gear where things start getting beefed up and, and strengthened so i definitely recommend it if you have the money and you want to purchase an electric version uh it's worked flawlessly throughout this entire build so far knock on wood um, we'll, we'll continue to update you on that if it changes at all. Somebody had a question about priming uh, or uh, corrosion prevention. Uh, a couple things. If you've watched any of the videos that uh, Zenith puts out on the rudder kits, the rudder workshops they do, the type of aluminum that we're using here is, is corrosion resistant just pretty much by itself. Um, now, if you were to leave a sheet of aluminum out in the, in the sun and weather and rain for 10, 15 years, would it start to discolor and potentially pit, definitely. 
Um, but where we plan to keep the aircraft, this hangar will never be stored outside. We don't live in a salty environment. And the fact that all of the pre-assembled, if you will, or, or pre-attached uh, angle that was put on the fuselage side, sides from the factory, that was all corrosion uh, prevented uh, from the factory. Um, so as far as what I'm doing, anywhere that I feel there's a major stress point or areas that I know are going to be getting wet, like the bottom of the aircraft, the tail skid, those areas that are going to be difficult to get to, we're definitely coating all those with a anti-corrosion primer slash uh, preventative. Um, a lot of the interior cabin stuff, I'm not doing that because the aluminum is fine by itself. I did do it uh, on some of the angle stiffeners on the side because those are exposed to the exterior. So to answer the question of firewall, uh, landing gear areas, and the tail skid area, I'm definitely making sure those are coated, uh, but it's not even necessary. In fact, Zenith even says you don't have to unless you, again, are living on the beach somewhere where you're gonna have salt spray water and all that. So that's a personal preference. Some people wanna prime and paint every single piece. And by all means, do that. Uh, my interior will be painted. Um, I'm not necessarily going to anti-corrosion prevent every single piece because it's not necessary. So guys, that's a quick update. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, what we've covered so far today. Again, you know, one of the things when you're building a kit plane, you have to look at all the resources you have available. And that may not, they may not all come from the manufacturer. Like I said in the previous video, you do get a nice set of plans and you get a assembly guide. I know that's been showed in some other videos, but when you get to some of the components, they just kind of list the parts, but they don't really tell you what to do with them. Um, it's kind of, you kind of have to use that in conjunction with the photos. And um, again, the photos online, some of them are a little dated and they may not even be a super duty, but you get the gist of what they're trying to show you. And unfortunately I overlooked one of those and that was when I was doing that cabin frame uh, I went ahead and riveted the sides when I should have left them off. Not a big deal. Luckily, I was able to remove the entire piece and clean it up. If I had to just remove one rivet, it'd be trickier to get in there and clean that out. But since the piece was coming off anyways, it was very easy to just pull the rivets out, drill them out, clean them up, and we're all back and in business. So uh, we're going to continue working on um, finishing up the interior this week or next week, I should say. Uh, we'll be finishing the firewall. So right now, it's just all cleco together. But we're going to get that primed and painted and the whole whole shebang, get that put on. Uh, and then we'll be waiting for that finish kit to come so I can finish the rudder pedals and prep and get this thing on landing gear so that we can then remove it from the table and start working on the horizontal stabilizer and or the wings. So we're going to decide on where we want to go with that uh, coming up soon. So, hey, guys, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Please share and like the videos. Again, you know, we've, we've been known, Airwork's been known in the drone world for many years, but uh, building airplanes has not been our forte, or at least, you know, up until now. So if you can share the video, tell people about the video. We'd love to have more views and like to see more people watching the video. So I appreciate those that have been tuning in. Keep sending those questions in, comments, recommendations. We'll take all of them. Uh, until next time, guys, it's Adam with Arrowworks, and we'll see you next week.